so we're back with Andrew and Droy Haywood from uh, owners of uh, Reactive Guns, Reactive Gunworks. Um, so <laughs> before we went to break, I, I wanted to talk with you about Beyond Clothing. It's it's one of the brands. It's exclusively the only brand you carry from a uh, clothes standpoint. Correct. Uh, correct. Yeah. Okay. So explain to me the concept for Beyond for Beyond Clothing. Uh, so Beyond Clothing is uh, it's, it's mission oriented clothing, uh, adventure clothing. Uh, anybody who's ever been to their website, they're really uh, just kind of around everyday adventure stuff. Uh, you know, it's evident with the, the photos on their website are shot with uh, one of their guys uh, in Iceland. You know, um, it's just kind of everyday stuff, really similar to uh, their competitor Arcteryx. Uh, mm -hmm in regards to the quality uh, and the construction of them, you know, and then they have a, they have a really unique layering system that actually makes it kind of easy. They, uh, they call it their Axios layering. It goes from A1 through A6. Uh, it kind of starts with base layers, goes into mid layers, uh, thermal layers every day, and then right up to rain and, and uh, cold weather protection. So good stuff uh, made right here in the USA. Awesome. It's, it's you know, the, the whole layering thing has always confused me. I, I never know. They, the people they talk. I hear base layer, mid layer. I was just like, <laughs> what happened to the days when we just wore jackets? <laughs> and, and you know, and, as I started to kind of start doing more outdoor activities and things of that nature, um, I started to understand uh, why layering is so important, um, especially once you start getting up and moving and kind of doing things. Especially when I go to these uh, training courses, um, you'll you'll start off with like three layers. By the end of the day, you're you're in a t-shirt. Um, and so for, for a lot of people, like the price point for Beyond isn't exactly cheap. Um, it's, no. Like you said, they're, they're one of the closest competitors is Arcturic. And we all know they, they aren't cheap either. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I, I know because I've, you know, I've become a pretty active shooter. Um, but for a lot of people who are kind of really just getting into shooting sports or just shooting in general, whether it be tactical style training, you know, things of that nature. How, how how would you talk to them about understanding what goes into having these types of clothes at that price point and what they're getting from that? Because I think a lot I think it kind of goes over a lot of people's heads and they don't really conceptualize or really understand why 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 I would pay that much for that. I'm just throwing a pair of Levi's jeans and call it a day. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, honestly, it's it's uh, what drove me to carry beyond and, and just to buy the high quality clothing mm -hmm. is uh, I don't know if it's just me. Um, I've, I've trained with uh, with with uh, Chris Costa, like I know you have. Mm -hmm. um, I did two of his classes, uh, which was an intermediate carbine where you're laying down in the prone the whole time. And I, I swear it's me. If it's a class with a prone, it's raining all three days. <laughs> and, you know, at the time I had a uh, Arcteryx Leaf gear in the first class, and I had Beyond Rain gear in the second. And you're in the prone; it's raining. You, you train like you fight. You know, yeah. you just yeah. you, you don't stop for weather breaks. And I lay down in the prone in a pair of rain pants and a rain jacket with uh, waterproof gator socks on the whole time. I was cold. I was a little miserable, yeah. but I wasn't wet. And I mean, three days in the mud. This yeah. stuff holds up. I've had a, I've had a Arcteryx jacket for for four years, uh, that's never tore. It's lasted, and you know, Beyond Clothing is the exact same, uh, the exact same quality. It's uh, military grade Gore-Tex, mm -hmm. uh, fully taped seams. I mean, it's it's completely waterproof. It's it's wonderful stuff. Yeah, I, I will attest to that. I, I've I've when I started doing courses, I started doing them in what I understood I'd wear for outdoor clothing. You know, jeans, t-shirts, maybe a jacket. Um, as time went on and I started taking more courses and started finding myself in the element a little bit more, that's when I really started to, to understand the value um, in high quality clothing. Um, mm -hmm. Not only that, it, 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 in terms of the material, the breathability, the flexibility, all of those things start to come into play. When you're in a course and you're there for three days straight, you're going to be tired. You're, you're going to be beautifully miserable, as I call it, um, especially <laughs> if you're dealing with the weather because you're having a good time. It's fun. But at the same time, you're standing all day long. Um, if it's raining, you're dealing with that. If it's cold, you're dealing with that. Hell, if it's hot, you're dealing with that as well. Um, <laughs> and like you said, all of these things start to take a toll on you over a duration of time. And a lot of your choice, a lot of the, your comfort level is going to come from the, the gear you choose to, to, to wear, essentially. Um, and for me, a big deal is, is the pants. You know, I, I, need, some, I need some stretch. <laughs> um, and, and, and I also need them to breathe while at the same time hold up to the damage in the, in the rigmarole that I'm putting these pants through, getting up, getting down on rocks and mud and all of those things. So it's definitely something that I, I can appreciate. And so that's why I asked you the question so that you can kind of explain to people what they're getting when they're buying into something at this price point. So um, 
Is there a major difference in dealing with the clothing aspect versus the gun stuff? Uh, not necessarily. I mean, the, the gun stuff is what we started with. It's what we're known for. It's, uh, you know, people have joked around that we're unicorn farmers because we seem to always have all these one-off pistols in stock. And, you know, with uh, with regards to that, I mean, it's kind of like we, we carry high quality, you know, we carry the, the highest quality Glocks. We also carry, uh, you know, SVI Infinity pistols, which are, you know, just absolutely amazing, handmade, the tightest tolerances I've ever felt on you, any you, gun. You mean, you mean like available now in SVI Infinity? Well, we uh, we have an agreement with them where we're not going to flood the market, and I have about uh, a half a dozen or so uh, available every month, and they just fly. They they they're I, gone within within minutes. I in the website. So yeah, you just you just change the whole yeah <laughs> the whole direction of this conversation. I but, uh, man, those in. I, Look. But but we we carry that stuff and then you know so we, we carry high quality uh, guns so we you know we carry high quality clothing I mean nothing yeah. on my website either hasn't been bought or shot or tested by myself and 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 all these different classes I've trained with Travis I've mm -hmm. trained with Chris I've trained with Aaron Cowan Will Petty uh, uh, Buck Doyle I you know I put the gear through the test and so it's, it's kind of a, we assimilate that you know we we don't carry garbage we don't carry stuff that's not going to hold up. Gotcha. No, and I'm I'm right there with you. I think there's a lot of criticism in our industry, and you can you can agree with me or disagree with me if you want. Um, there's a lot of criticism oh, really? for anything that 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 has a pretty decent price tag, mm -hmm. at least for, at least from what I've seen. Um, mm -hmm. There's this under there's this idea that like there's no way possible to justify something that has a higher price tag versus something else, but which is which is sometimes odd to me because it's like when we understand and completely comprehend the idea of the quality of machining and parts that go into firearms. Um, yeah. For some reason, when we step outside of that into something else, it doesn't necessarily translate uh, for a lot of people. I mean, is that is that something that you've seen? Like, you have, have you found yourself in a position where you have to defend why certain things cost this much on your website or? Oh yeah, no, absolutely. You know, uh, you, you know why? Why would you buy a twenty five hundred dollar Glock? You know, why would I spend six hundred dollars on a Beyond jacket? Well, yeah. with the jacket, it's easy. I mean. Uh, you can spend six hundred dollars once and have a jacket that's going to last you most of your life, or you can buy, you know, uh, six one hundred dollar jackets every year. Yeah. It's, it's going to be the same thing. Yeah. You know, you get what you pay for. Same thing with the custom Glocks. I mean, guys, uh, you know, it's, it's like cars. People like to 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 tweak their stuff. They like to, you know, pimp their ride as it is. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, that, that's why I sell gold barrels. I sell gold yeah. barrels. Uh, I sell from Blacklist. They're chameleon. They're that. They're kind of a rainbow. Yeah, uh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. They're they're amazing. You know, guys, that's why there's color variations. I offer stuff in multiple finishes, multiple cuts, threaded, non-threaded with barrels, triggers come in different colors, and then, you know, sides. I mean, boy, there's there's a 10,000. Sides are such a personal preference. Oh, I, my gosh. Fuck you, yeah. but no, I, I know they're, they're incredibly personal. And, and you know what's funny? Talking to somebody who is not really into guns and then he they're hearing you kind of obsess over the sights that are on your gun – and yeah. look, like they kind of look at you kind of almost like you live in another world because they don't understand why I'm obsessing about two little pieces of metal or plastic that go on top of my gun. I'm like, yeah. you mean the thing that actually allows me to hit what I'm aiming at? Yeah. Um, but it, it, it like for me, my preferences, I can't stand stock Glock sights. Um, no. I like I like a high contrast front bead mm -hmm. um, to my rears. Yeah, that, that's just kind of how I and I love my front bead to be very, very small. Um, but for other people, they like super super bright big rear rear two dot sights and then in the front yeah. super big beam the, 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 that's the big giant b exactly beam i've never circle in the in the square and yeah, <laughs> I've, yeah. I've, yeah the t I've, they're gonna come out with tic-tac-toe sights in a minute here <laughs> <laughs> so uh you do a little bit of i'm just probably an understatement but you do a little bit of skydiving um and yeah. you know the, the people here are always trying to get me to jump out of planes and jump out of stuff for Absolutely. whatever reason. It's weird. People find out you have a phobia about something and they want you to do it. I, I, I never quite understood that. It's like, <laughs> I, I, I'm like, I don't see somebody who's scared of snakes and say, hey, go touch it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so now I've talked to, I've talked to several people who, who, who skydive and, and they all say the same thing, that there's just this kind of euphoric bliss that comes from falling out of a plane, um, hurtling towards the ground and, but for, for whatever reason, you guys keep doing it over and over and over again. Explain this to me because I've, I've, I'm not quite <laughs> comprehending this at all. 
it's a uh, it's a pretty good adrenaline rush um you know falling falling out of a plane it, it's a little it, it's like you said it's euphoric it's i'm in control of my own destiny i have a parachute mm -hmm. i can choose when i want to deploy my main parachute uh you know you go out it's a it's a group sport and you know it's just it's kind of a lot of people are worried about the sensation of falling but when you're falling through the sky there's there's not necessarily a reference point you're not falling immediately next to something gotcha. where you realize that you're falling at 125 miles an hour see that's the thing i can't do yeah <laughs> I can't. Well, well, oh you, put me in a car put me in a car i'll go i'll go 160 miles an hour down the tollway i've never done this i've never done this <laughs> but i'll go <laughs> but if i could i would go 160 miles an hour down the tollway here and i wouldn't bat an eye Tell me to fall yeah. out of a plane. I'll tell you to take me home. <laughs> we, we, we can we can arrange it if you want to fall out of a plane. I, I, I got a guy who's going to be a shot show who's a qualified tandem instructor. You, you 3,000, uh, 3,400 plus jumps, uh, trains the military. You could does it, uh, <laughs> three days a week. You could Uber <laughs> Jesus to my house to get me to jump out of a plane. And I still wouldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> it it's safe. He, he hasn't died yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually one of the safest, uh, you know, uh, last year, I remember looking at the statistics, um, I believe there was 21 deaths, 21 or 25 deaths for over 5 million or 4.5 million skydives. Really? That's yeah, a, you that, got, that's you actually... got a greater chance of dying in a car accident on your way to the drop zone than you do actually dying in the uh, the actual skydive. That's, that's actually really, that's actually pretty good. However, let me know when it gets to zero. And then when it gets to zero... <laughs> Then we'll talk, <laughs> no, yeah. but but no, man, it, it, it's definitely been a pleasure speaking with you guys. Um, I, I, I was on the site uh, quite a bit. I really love it. It looks great. Um, Absolutely. And you know, we're gonna have to have a little off off the air talk about these uh, Infinity pistols because um, oh, yeah. I refuse to wait eight years for a pistol. I'm exaggerating <laughs> a little bit, but you know, nonetheless. Uh, but no, I really thanks guys. I really appreciate, it, and I hope you join us again soon. Absolutely, thank you. Thank Absolutely, you. you have a good one. You do. And on the other side of the break. Competitive shooter and trainer Jessica Hook joins us to talk about some of her favorite guns and ammo.